Hello, I'm Peter Bogdanovich. From 1949 into 1952, Orson Welles was directing and starring in his own production of Shakespeare's Othello, shot on location around Europe and North Africa. For various reasons, financial at first and then actors' scheduling, he had to suspend shooting for periods of time, during which he would then act in other people's movies, like Black Magic or Prince of Foxes, using his salary from these to finance Othello. But there was also, as I said, actors' availabilities to consider, and two of his actors were very old friends of Orson's, Hilton Edwards, playing Desdemona's father, Brabantio, and Michael McLeamore, who co-starred with Wells as the infamous Siago. These two were the founders and directors of Dublin's highly respected Gate Theatre, and one of the long breaks from shooting Othello came about because Edwards and McLeamore had to do their repertory season in Dublin. These two men and the Gate Theatre were especially important to Orson Welles because it was there that he'd acted for the first time professionally back in the early 30s when he was just 16. Looking and sounding far beyond his years, he had convinced Edwards and McLeamore that he was a well-known actor in the States, though they later claimed not to have been fooled, but only charmed. Anyway, the three became fast friends, and so, directing his first movie in Europe, he wanted them to be a part of it. During one of Orson's breaks from Othello, late in 1951, Edwards and McLeamore asked him to become involved in a little film project of their own, one that Edwards had scripted and planned to direct. It was called Return to Glenys Call, and as the film's subtitle would explain, it was a story that is told in Dublin, a kind of ghost legend about a man who encounters a couple of women on a lonely road at night and what happens when they take him back to their home back to Glenys Call for an evening's drink. Orson would play himself, also driving on a lonely road when he encounters this man who then tells Orson the strange story. The entire two-reel short would then be framed by Wells' experience, and he would narrate as your obedient servant, a phrase familiar to radio listeners from Orson's many years with his own famous dramatic shows on that long-lost medium, just beginning to fade at the time this little film was made. Glenys Call, as we find, means Glen of the Shadows, shadows being another word for ghosts. An evocative and virtually unknown little curiosity, the picture received an Academy Award nomination in 1953 for Best Two-Reel Short Subject, got fairly limited distribution in Ireland that year and in the UK and the United States, and then disappeared. It's a likable and unpretentious effort, awkward in certain ways, but strangely haunting nonetheless, of course, its greatest interest today is because of Orson Welles' brief appearances in it and his typically expressive narration. Untypical, though, is Orson agreeing to be seen without makeup of any kind. He's about 36 here. The only other example being as the notorious Harry Lyme in The Third Man, also made during this period. In fact, the effective solo harp from Glenys Call somewhat recalls to us that famous zither music from that film. For film buffs, there's also a little inside joke early in the picture, when the traveler Orson picks up explains his car's breakdown, saying he's had trouble with his distributor. Turning the word to a different use, Orson says, yes, he's had trouble with his distributor too, a veiled comic allusion to Wells' difficulties with Hollywood studios. So, here's a return to Return to Glenys Call, with its touchingly appropriate quote from the Song of Solomon, which Orson recorded a couple of times in his career, a quote applicable to the shadows of the silver screen as well, those ghosts from the pictures of the past, until the day break and the shadows flee away. <laughs>